Hello and welcome. Today we have a special guest with us, Dr. Sandeep Tripathi. Dr. Tripathi, welcome to our channel. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Rahul. So our viewers, so we are bringing Dr. Tripathi, who is an associate professor of pediatrics. He's a pediatric intensivist uh, in the University of Chicago. Is it right, Dr. Tripathi? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And he's also a co-lead for uh, SCCM Discovery Virus COVID-19 Registry, the pediatric part of it. So Dr. Tripathi, congratulations for your uh, publication, which came out a few months ago in Pediatric Critical Care Medicine. Thanks. Thanks, Rahul. We, our viewers, this is uh, such a uh, such a sad time, but thank you for uh, your efforts and your team's efforts. We're not only being on forefront of clinical care, but you're finding time to actually do research and publish these things. So tell us about this uh, publication, uh, which has come out, what is the title and what is the summary of, of this manuscript? Yes, so um, uh, the paper was published in the PCCM and its title is uh, Coronavirus Disease Associated PICU Admissions, a report from the Society of Critical Care Medicine uh, Discovery Networks uh, Virus Registry. So what we did in this paper is we looked at uh, all the patients in the virus registry and identified children uh, less than 18 years of age who were admitted to the ICU and then our objective was to find out among these patients who are admitted to the ICU from COVID who are at the risk for um, more severe illness. Um, and, and the idea behind was that, you know, in the early part of the pandemic, there was this thought that children are uh, spared from the worst effects of COVID. But as we learned more, uh, we found out there are uh, some, some children who get very, very sick from COVID. And we wanted to find out uh, which, uh, what put these children at a risk of getting severe COVID. So that was the, our main aim of, of doing this study. So we looked at the virus registry, you know, virus registry is now uh, SCCM's registry and has uh, uh, probably one of the largest uh, registry of COVID patients uh, in the world. And uh, we looked at children from, uh, from March of 2020 to January of 2021. And out of which we had about 11,000 children who were admitted to the hospital with COVID and entered into the registry. Out of them, about 400 uh, were admitted to the ICU. So, uh, so we identified those 400 patients, the final, analysis cohort was about 394 uh, patients. Then uh, as we have learned more about COVID in children, we have known that now that pediatric COVID in particular is two separate diseases. One is the respiratory illness uh, or the, the we call it a non-MISC COVID-19. And the other one is the MISC, which happens about two, three weeks after in COVID infection and children get very, very sick from it, like the multi-system inflammation. Uh, so in, in this study, we separated those patients out. We separated the MISC presentation and separated the non-MISC presentation and separately analyzed them and tried to find out which patients are at more risk of critically illness among those two different categories. So, so that was sort of the idea of the study. We had 400 patients. Um, we separated about 50 were MISC and 50 were non-MISC and out of which uh, we identified how many were critically ill. And the critically ill definition we made on based on organ support requirement, which would mean you are requiring ventilator or you're requiring medication to support the blood pressures or you're requiring dialysis. So if you required any of those, then we call, when we classified them as, as critically ill. So we found uh, in, from the onset that a, a little bit larger proportion of patients with MISC were critically ill compared to non-MISC. So MISC, the chances of you getting critically ill are much higher if you have MISC compared to non-COVID. Non so, and after doing more analysis, first of all, of course, we looked at the children who had MISC and compared them with non-MISC to see how there is a difference in the presentation. So, one thing we found is that um, obesity was one of the one of the things that was very striking, uh, and and about forty four percent of all patients in the total cohort were obese, although they were not different between MIC and non MIC patients. Then 
uh, African American had a higher proportion uh, uh, in the MIC cohort compared to the non MIC cohort. Then we looked at the uh, the presentation. So if you have fever or abdominal symptoms, you're more likely to have an MISC compared to non-MISC, which had more of a respiratory symptoms. Third, if you have uh, inflammatory uh, abnormal lab values, which is like a CRP or white count, they were more abnormal in MISC cohort than, than the non-MISC cohort. Then we looked at their outcomes or how, how did these patients do uh, so the, the overall mortality uh, was 4%, which means that 4% of all children who were admitted to the ICU and entered in the virus registry uh, died from COVID. Uh, this difference was not different between the two, two groups. Um, the, the hospital length of stay uh, was longer in the MIC group. So if you are admitted to the ICU, uh, if you have an MIC, you stayed about two days longer compared to the non-MIC cohort. Uh, then we looked at um, the risk factor. So that was the, the main objective of the study is what puts you at a risk for critically illness. And that's where uh, we do is what we call as a regression analysis, which we, in that cell, what that is, is we adjust for, for example, if you are, if you find out that there are, if you are older, then you have a higher risk for critical illness. If you are, for example, say male, that you have a higher risk of critical illness. If you are obese, you have higher risk of critical illness. But it is also possible that you are older, you might have more comorbidities, you might have more chances of being obese. What regression does is it adjusts for, for one variable in and keeps everything else is constant. So if you are old, irrespective of whether you are obese or not, whether you have or not a high risk of illness. So in this study, we adjusted for patient's age, of course, all of our children, but we, adjust, but, uh, but we adjusted for whether you were uh, less than two or more than two. We adjusted for race, uh, we adjusted for sex, and we adjusted for comorbidities, uh, two or more comorbidities, and we also adjusted for uh, the number of signs and symptoms representation, sort of a surrogate of how sick you were. So, uh, and on that, what we found out that if you are, have more than two or more comorbidities, for example, if you are obese and have lung disease and you get admitted to the ICU, you have three times higher risk of having critical illness from COVID. While interestingly, we found none of that had an independent association with MISC. So MISC patients, whether or not you have comorbidities, it does not matter if you would get critically ill from COVID um, or from COVID as an MISC. So that, that was a very, uh, so there's something that we already know and sort of this study validated what our anecdotal experience was that previously healthy kids also get MISC and get very, very sick from it. Uh, and what uh, what that means is if you have uh, you know if you have comorbidities, of course, when we did this study, the vaccines were not available. But now, as of now, uh, if you have comorbidities, particularly multiple comorbidities, it's uh, it's like drop everything and go get the vaccines right now. So that is my question. So thank you for so much explaining that. So the implications are that uh, uh, the providers who are taking care of these patients, they should be at lookout for uh, if the patients have this certain comorbidities, either aggressive treatment or kind of use it uh, to make sure that, you know, parents and then uh, the, the children understand that their chances of getting sicker is higher. But right. what, what message you would like to give it to the parents or uh, children uh, knowing now, no, know at the time of recording, we have Delta and Omicron uh, variants going on. What would be your message or what would be the implication on the public health uh, from the US study? Right. Uh, so as, as you know, Rahul, um, in the last few months, now children are more and more getting sick from COVID. Uh, in, in fact, in, in the early part of pandemic, we hardly saw children coming to the ICU. But now, um, you know, every every day we get multiple ch children getting into the ICU. So the it is becoming more of a pediatric disease uh, than it than it used to be. And I don't know if the it's something that needs to be explored whether Omicron variant or other variants are more affecting kids, or just because the children at least less than five year old are less not vaccinated, so they're more likely to get uh, ill from COVID. Now, what that 
having said that, A, we, we now know uh, who are at most risk. B, just because you don't have comorbidities doesn't mean that you won't get very sick from COVID. So healthy children can get very, very sick from COVID. And so vaccines, there is, there is no excuse to not get vaccines. There is really no excuse. Vaccines have been around forever. And so get the vaccines. And particularly if you have comorbidities, go and get the vaccines now. And if you are symptomatic from, if you are exposed from COVID and you have comorbidities, be very careful that this can progress uh, to a very severe illness. Strong message that you know uh, they, you still have a chance to get uh, very sick even though you're healthy and especially with comorbidities, be careful about it. So thank you for doing that, uh, Dr. Tripathi. Um, I know that uh, we know that you are involved in uh, further research. So what is in future for what you're uh, building up based on what you have uh, studied and published now uh, without spilling the bean, if you can give us a sneak peek of upcoming uh, literature from your efforts, uh, our uh, viewers will be very appreciated. Yes, uh, so um, I'm obviously um, um, one of the investigators in virus and uh, it's, it's a collaborative group of highly dedicated uh, intensivists across the world. I think this paper itself had 38 uh, um, centers and 38 investigators who put in the effort. So we're very grateful for all their contributions. It's mostly voluntary um, registry. Uh, so a lot of people are doing a work from virus um, uh, registry and uh, some of the things that, uh, we are working on, uh, for example, we now know who is at most risk. Uh, what we don't know is what works in the treatment for, for children. Adults, we know, uh, you know, we have done a lot of big trials and the big trials have shown, you know, there's a steroid work for, for uh, adults in COVID, uh, remdesivir works. But in children, most of this is guidelines and guidelines are basically extrapolated from the adult data. There is no good data on children yet on what works. So this is what something we are working on and trying to find out what, uh, for example, does steroid work in pediatric COVID or not? Uh, there is some data on immunoglobulin and steroid in MISC, which have been published by other people. Uh, but we are also looking at our registry and trying to parse it out in a little bit more detail on uh, when exactly uh, giving early or late makes a difference or not, and, and combination of other uh, uh, other uh, therapies for COVID, does that make a difference? Absolutely. That's such an important work and it's much needed. Uh, we would like to thank you, uh, not for uh, just uh, uh, for, you know, doing all this research, especially for being on frontline along with your colleagues of taking care of the patients in, in day to day life in pediatric intensive care unit, but finding time to actually uh, advance the field and doing these research projects. So wish you uh, good luck. Uh, shout out to Society of Healthcare Medicine Discovery uh, Group uh, for providing the infrastructure and then actually having uh, this registry made possible. Uh, so quick summary uh, from you to our viewers, uh, what we have talked today from your paper. Um, so a quick summary uh, would be that we had looked for um, patients from the virus registry, 400 patients who were admitted to ICU and identified those who were at higher risk for critical illness, found out that uh, patients who have comorbidities, particularly two or more comorbidities, have a three times higher risk of getting very, very sick from COVID compared to those who did not. And, uh, and, and the patients who develop MISC, having comorbidities does not put you at, at a higher risk, which means healthy children are also very likely to get uh, very sick from COVID-19. Um, so that's absolutely very strong uh, findings from hope and message is go get vaccinated if you are eligible and then there's no contraindication that we cannot uh, emphasize absolutely, it. absolutely can't emphasize that enough there is there is really no reason not to get vaccines thank you so much dr tripathi we'll bring you back we know that you're working on some fascinating uh, manuscript which will add to the field so we are definitely sure that we'll be bringing you uh, back on this channel to our viewers Please like, uh, write in comment section what you liked about the video and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can get the comments, uh, you get the new videos out of it. Thank you so much, Dr. Tipati. Thank you, Rahul. Thanks for having me.